In this lesson, we'll learn how global illumination can be used to add very realistic secondary lighting to our scene. Okay, so here I have this alleyway scene. And if you take a look at this, uh, we have this uh, sort of a white sphere in here. This is going to be really to help us see some of the effect of indirect illumination here. So if I come in and just press Alt-R on my keyboard, you can see that we have uh, basically a infinite light that's been set up here to sort of simulate a direct illumination source like the sun, and then that's pretty much it. So if I come in and press Shift-R to render this into my picture viewer, we'll sort of use this as our comparison to see where we started this lesson, because by the end of this lesson, this is going to look radically, radically different as far as our overall lighting is concerned. Now one thing that I will do is I'll come in here and switch to my render camera, so that way as I'm moving around, I can make sure that I'm always rendering from the same position. So when we look at a lighting result like this, this is not at all what we would see in real life. So in the real world, light doesn't just simply exist in a straight path. Light bounces uh, around within our scenes, within the rooms that we're sitting in, and back to our eyes. So we should have a lot of indirect illumination that is happening here. So in Sight of Cinema 4D, this is called Global Illumination. So Global Illumination, uh, just a note, if you are using Cinema 4D Prime, you won't have access to this feature. But if you're using Cinema 4D Broadcast, Cinema 4D Visualize, or Cinema 4D Studio, you'll have access to uh, this Global Illumination feature that I'm about to show you. So let's go in and take a look at our render settings. So in one of our earlier lessons, we learned how we could come down to our effects and add in things like ambient occlusion. Well, in the same menu, we can add in global illumination. So global illumination, uh, depending on the version of Cinema 4D that you're following along with, uh, may look a little bit different than what I have here. But there are actually quite a few features and uh, attributes found in here. Now, we're not going to talk about all of these. I'll just kind of give you an idea of what this global illumination is and how we can start to use it. So with global illumination enabled, Let's come in, and I'll once again press Shift-R on my keyboard, and it's going to go through and do some extra calculation now. So what Cinema 4D is doing is it's now calculating the amount of illumination in my scene, how that illumination should look when it starts to bounce around, and it's going to finally render out my final result. So if you compare what I had before to what I have now, this is a dramatic difference. So now if I get in here a little bit closer, you can actually see now where the light is bouncing off of this red brick wall and actually bouncing some of that illumination back onto this surface. We can also see where things like uh, the light is bouncing off of the ground and actually illuminating sort of the under part of this with a little bit more of a gray. You can even see where the light is bouncing off of this orange cone and starting to splash some orange illumination up against this white object. So this is really, really nice. So when we come in here, we have things like this diffuse depth. Um, so this is basically calculating how many times the light is going to bounce within this scene. Right now, with it set at one bounce, you can get some pretty decent results. But I usually find that if you set this up to two or maybe even three, you can start to get something that is a bit more realistic. Now, granted, this does take a little bit of extra time to calculate, but the results that you get are really, really nice. Okay, so that took just a little bit longer, and if you compare what I had before to what I have now, there's not just a tremendous amount of difference, but if I get in here just a little bit closer, you can see that with the uh, diffuse bounce set at 1, we get sort of these darkened areas in the shadows, but with that set to 2, it's able to bounce and get just a little bit more of this indirect illumination into some of these shadowed areas. Okay, so when it comes to working inside of the global illumination, like I said, we do have some controls over sampling, so we can start to um, control from just a few simple little presets how uh, high quality or low quality we want our uh, sampling to be. The sampling is essentially just the overall light gathering and the calculation that happens there. So uh, without getting just too detailed with this, we can uh, very quickly come in here and make a few uh, minor adjustments. For the most part, I find that uh, if you use something like the Irradiance uh, plus QMC, this is a quasi Monte Carlo, 
This is a new type of calculation that's been included in Cinema 4D R14. Uh, but I find that this gives some really, really good results taking this uh, IR mode and then maybe using something like the medium, maybe even the high samples if you choose to, but medium, I find for most situations, is going to do pretty good. So let's come in here and just quickly see what we get. Okay, very nice. So overall that doesn't look just tremendously different from what I had before. The only difference is now by changing uh, my uh, GI mode to this QMC, my render does happen a little bit faster. So in this case I was getting a render back in about 21 seconds. Now with this QMC it's cut down to about 16 seconds. But overall really doesn't look that much different. So like I said, we're not going to spend just a tremendous amount of time here. We could probably dedicate an entire course just to talking about all of these different features and all the little subcategories found in here. So uh, just keep in mind that as you start to work with this, um, usually these presets will get you pretty good results most of the time. Now one last thing that I want to show you before we wrap up this lesson is the fact that while we do have some indirect illumination here, it still doesn't look quite right. If I go back to my picture viewer that we were looking at, we do have some indirect illumination that's being bounced by the objects. But if this were a real outdoor scene, we should have some secondary illumination that's coming from the sky. In our case, we really don't have that. So whenever rendering some sort of an outdoor environment with this global illumination, I find that it's usually a good idea to come in here and add a sky environment. So let's go to Create, Environment, and we'll drop in a sky. Okay, now if I come back and render this out, we should start to see now a little bit of light that is bouncing a little bit more realistically in here. So we'll give this just a moment. There we go. So now we're actually getting some secondary illumination in here. So compared to what I had before and what I have now, the sky is able to uh, take some of these rays that are being shot out to gather this illumination, and it's returning some of that back into my scene. And that sky just exists up here in my uh, manager up here. Now what we could do is, let's say we wanted to give this sky a particular color. Well, if we take a look at the sky, we really don't have any controls over that. But what we could do is make a material and assign that to the sky. So I'll just double click here in my material manager to make a new material. I can just simply drag that up into my manager and drop that onto the sky. So here's my material tag that's been applied. We can go in there and let's give this maybe sort of a bluish color for my sky. And there we go. If we go in and just change the color for this, uh, as long as we're using this on our sky, that should be all that we have to do. Things like specular, uh, bump maps, those really don't uh, get factored in. So let's see what that looks like now. You can see it's really going to heavily tint this a blue color because that sky is really going to factor in strongly for our global illumination result. So now we definitely have that blue color, but it's not very realistic. So we'll probably have to come back in here and just really tone that down a little bit. Maybe to almost a grayish blue color. There we go. Let's try that. There we go. And then once that's finished, you can see compared to what I had before, actually what I had earlier than that, without our sky being colored. Now that brings just a little bit more of that blue tint into my overall result. So we could even take this just a little bit further if we wanted to. This uh, sky, if I go back to my regular camera, you can see sort of my sky out here. What we could do is instead of plugging in just a simple flat material color, we could actually plug in a texture and actually use a texture to generate lighting information for our scene. So let's go to our material that we have connected to the sky. Let's go in, go to texture, and let's load a texture in here. If you take a look inside the Cinema 4D files, inside the text directory, this is for our textures, you can come in here and load up this environment IBL. So this is for image-based lighting. We can plug that in. We'll just leave that set uh, as the color for this. And 
what this should do now is we can use the lighting information from this image to sort of provide this indirect illumination into our scene. So this type of an image is an HDR or a high dynamic range image. Now what this does is it actually contains uh, much more luminance information and lighting information than a normal bitmap or a JPEG image. So this is a special file type. Um, so let's come in here and with this high dynamic range applied let's take a look at what we get. Once again we'll go back to our render camera shift R to render this out and now what this is going to do is actually use the color and the light intensity information in that HDR image and then use that to provide the secondary illumination for my scene. So now we can start to get something that is very, very realistic with not a lot of effort. Okay, and if you would like to learn a little bit more about these high dynamic range images and exactly how they work and how they're built, uh, Digital Tutors actually does have some courses on the process of creating these high dynamic range images yourself and how these get utilized inside your 3D application for lighting purposes. So that's a look at how we can start to incorporate this very, very realistic illumination into our scene by taking advantage of global illumination.